right, now this comes from uh, Dave Vigorito's book. He did an excellent job on the King's Indian, and then um, this is a, a game from. Hopefully, I'm not butchering the names. I mean, I apologize. I'm from Alabama. Namukin and Smirin. Smirin, uh, like he's he's been traditionally. Um, if you're looking for somebody to look up games in the King's Indian. Smirin has been the number one 2600 for like the past 30 years that his main weapon is the King's Indian. The King's Indian at the top level is seen to be a risky opening, but if you're able to maintain 2600 through like basically three generations of chess players, you're, or decades I should say, not necessarily generations, you're, you're a beast with it. So he comes up with a lot of amazing ideas, which we'll see from the main line in this game. But the main reason I wanted to go over this, I've got a lot of Kings Indian players that are on my team, and we want to break down some of these ideas. So if you're not Kings Indian player with black, look at it from the white perspective as some ideas of what you could potentially do or not do in the scenario. So, okay, starting off, you got a question? What's Kings Indian play? Classical. So this defines it as the classical with this knight f3 bishop e2 this is considered broadly like one of the most popular ways to play against it and what most people do when they're playing with white like close second to this well in my mind from what i play because i play the king's indian quite a lot you see the classical the samish and the fianchetto all about the same it's like one in three chance when you sit down with somebody and then there's like 10 or so other variations that aren't as popular. That you get like 1 in 5, 1 in 8, stuff like that. That's how I play white. Okay. So yeah. after e5, we're not going to cover the exchange variation in this video, aptly put, because you're exchanging the pawn in the middle. So say d5. This is the Petrosian variation, named after the world champion Tigran Petrosian because he liked positional games and he locks the center immediately versus the King's Indian. Now, when the center is locked, where do we play? Uh, king side. Wings. On the wings, but specifically, you're right. You play on the king side for black. Where is the point of impact in the pawn structure for black? Um, uh huh. D6. No, not d6. Oh, no, c6. Not c6. c6. c If you ever play c6 with black, you're looking for a positional yeah. grind and you're going to lose. That's the impact. Yeah, no. The impact square, you said play on the king side. You just told me that, right? Right at me. Because you want to break down the center. Where's the impact square for white? He wants to break down the center. When you're playing on the wings, so white, his entire game is going to be based on breaking it down on c5. Your entire game is going to be on f5 and going after his king that's on the king side. And you'll see how it goes. So after a5, the first type move. I saw you play a move like this. And it's an excellent prophylactic move. And remember, prophylaxis is trying to prevent something bad happening to you before it does. He wants to play b4 and c5. If you understand the plans in the position, the moves make a lot more sense. And you can play them without any hesitation. So a lot of you guys would go, well, why can't I just play like a3 and b4? If you play a3 at the wrong time, I play a4, you can't ever push the pawns without me taking on passant and ruining the structure. So in fact, you have to play rook b1, b3, a3, b4 to accomplish that plan. It's slow, but it's guaranteed to work. You can't play a3 and b4, you'll get positionally killed. I've been murdering people for over a decade playing this with black from them missing these minor nuances. You have a question? What's your plan with a6? Um, using those two pawns, the b and a pawn, you could win that around. Yeah, if you play a6 and b5, it has a binko gambit flavor, but what side of the board do we say white's trying to take advantage of and play on? No, white's plan to trying to play on the queen side. You are playing on the king side. You're going after him. You're playing so you for f5. Stop, so like, your position the points like an arrow. Like, notice how you hit to the side. Okay, going back to give another example in a pawn structure that's probably more familiar to you guys. Okay, when the French defense, when you lock the pawns, it points like an arrow, right? Where do you hit? 
you hit with C5. It's the same principle. When the center is locked, typically, wherever the arrow ends, that's where you hit. That's the sweet spot. Okay? So, A5, castles, knight A6. And I should say from a King's Indian perspective, this bishop is very, very, very important for attacking purposes. You do not want to trade him off unless it's sacrificing on the king's side most of the time for the win. Question? So then you move the other knight to To play f5, yeah. Now, where to move that knight is important. Now, this is where you made the mistake in, in your game with the understanding because you left this knight like on d7. It was in the way of the bishop instead of playing a5, knight a6. Now, knight h5 at some point is good. I like playing knight d7 and knight d5, but my knight's always in the way, and then I have to play like or something to get my bishop out. Okay, b6 to get the bishop out is definitely bad because notice with the bishop on b7, it's just biting on the, like a wall of pawns and it doesn't yeah. do anything. All right, you have a question? Yeah, yeah, you're good to go. So maybe I could do knight d7 and then knight c5. Okay, so here's the thing. Notice how this knight's already hitting this pawn, right? We would love to have this knight on c5. One, if a piece there, he surely can't play c5 himself. And two, with the knight there... He's going to have to defend this pawn because we have two attackers attacking it. One defender, pretty straightforward. Bishop d3? Bishop e3, and you want to give up your good bishop for my knight on c5? You sure about that one? Yeah, you trade that knight off. I'm happy for you to take there. You have no attack if you take on c5. You can never break with my pawns. So then, if the center's locked, you have no counterplay on the queen side. I attack you on the king side, you lose. Okay, bishop d3. Why would you play bishop d3? You already moved that guy. You keep saying bishop e3, and that's still wrong, though. If bishop e3 here, knight c5, are you saying take? That is miserable. You will never be able to play c5, and if you want to take something like this, all right, I'll take you here. Tactics. What white wants to do? White's got plenty of moves here. Bishop e3, like... Be clear with your lines because you said bishop d3, then bishop e3, then bishop d3, then bishop e3. I'm just saying, they're still both wrong, but you know. All right, here's a move that makes more sense, though. Bishop g5, because if he can't move the knight, he can't start his kingside attack, right? So then, black insists on you moving the bishop away so I can get stuff started. But he doesn't play g5 immediately. In this case, he plays bishop d7. And after knight d2, this is also prophylaxis, an excellent move for white, because he's preemptively going, when you play f5, much like in the advanced French, when c3 is played to shore up the center so I can take back in the center with a pawn, he's preparing f3. Good. Also, with the knight here, he's also preemptively defending this pawn again, so if your knight comes to c5, it is well defended. Got it? All right, so continuing, knight c5. B3, this is a move setting up the plan we talked about before. B3, rook B1, A3, B4. White's playing flexibly. He's playing on both sides of the board. He's not letting things get out of hand. He's doing all the right type stuff. Queen E8, what is the point of this move? So, so your donkey can move, man. Simple. So you can play knight to somewhere. Definitely not knight H5 right now. Clip, clip, uh, had a bad day. Yeah, no. Knight h7, on the other hand, makes sense. Then f5, and if you give me some g5, f4 action, I got your b. You know? So, a3, he's continuing the plan. Now, kicking bees. Kicking bees. <laughs> Knight h7, b4, and both sides are getting some initiative with their plan. Now, also, understand why bishop d7 and queen e8 were played. Gives us another option. We don't have to go backwards with a knight. We can go forwards. And after queen c2, we got ourselves take, take. And now you could play You could play for f5. Now, here is just my personal choice. f5 does make sense. It goes along with your plan. But you can play h5. And the idea is that after f3... Your bishop was really bad, so you're figuring out a new diagonal for him to relocate to. 
So white gets his plan. Black's got counterplay. Everybody's having fun. I think this is why Kings Indian players play these types of positions. You got attacking positions where you can make some stuff happen. All right? And I mean, th this I could recommend with a straight face for white or black. It's an objective line. Neither was. Yeah. So going back, instead of knight a6, say knight d2 is played. Now That's here. <laughs> you ain't watching TV at home. Yeah, man. <laughs> He's just digging his belly button. He's just getting it, man. All right. <laughs> hey, Bob. Bathroom. <laughs> and this is why we do these lessons live. Yeah, you, 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 I mean, yeah, yeah. He's going for the. He was going for the bonus. Belly button scratching and all. All right. Let's get back on point because we just saw a line where black played from h6 to h5 to get rid of his bishop on h6, right? When I see knight d2, I see an opportunity to get rid of my bad bishop, and I think bishop h6. After he moves, thank you. And now a4. Get back. Because there's clearly a problem with knight takes a4, right? It just looks really sketchy, and you hang your e4 pawn. Knight takes a4, knight takes e4. Sketchy. So knight d2, knight c5, takes, takes, bishop g4, bishop d7. And now here's a common plan. You see it in the check Benoni. If there's not a bishop here in the hole, you make a house for somebody new. Knight h5, knight g7, and he helps with the push of f5. Okay? Another simple plan. Pretty straightforward. So that was knight d2. We face it with bishop h6. Now let's say queen c2. Don't throw your shoe again. I'm going to throw my shoe at you. So after queen c2, yeah, it landed. After queen c2, knight c5 was played. Bishop g5. And again, it's the same type of plan as before. h6. Now here, b6. Secure the knight. You're really going to like this idea. This is the main line by Smearin at this point. And as soon as I saw this, I was confused on how to play it. I've been playing it this way ever since and having, having good results. He finds a brilliant pawn sack idea that we'll see in a minute. So knight d2, of course we understand this move, is preparing f3, preparing to meet all the kingside stuff, and prevents knight h5 because you can take and get rid of that b, the bad b. B. So now, important move, bishop g4. And we've talked about not to trade, but in this scenario, it's actually good for you because taking back with a knight, you're hitting that bishop. And you'll be able to get his bad bishop. Yeah. So you're getting his good and his bad bishop. So, I mean, things are happening there. So, in fact, f3 is played. He stops you. Now, from what we've seen with the previous lines, where's the best spot for that bishop to go? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. That's why we're going over it, to help you more. D7, good, flexible, hitting both ways, both looking at B5 and F5. It is the best square. Does everything. It's only spot. Only spot, yeah. <laughs> I make it sound like a hard question. No, definitely not. B3, we know what this plan's about for white. Really? Quit messing around. So, and we're doing this line for you. And you're throwing your shoes and messing around. I'm just saying, like... No, my shoes are like... Oh, yeah, yeah, excuses. Stop talking. <laughs> all right, after B3. All right, what is the point of B3? White's plan. What is he doing? You said you play this with white and black. <laughs> yeah, this is why you shouldn't be throwing your shoes. Yes, Hilbert. Um, oh, you yeah, the whole... A3, rook, B1, oh, B4. Yeah, yeah. And, see, and this is why he's in time trouble every game. <laughs> no, I remember, yeah. I remember. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. And then he already made his move, though, and he's lost. No! No! All right. Yes, I count it. All right. B3. What's Black's plan? You can see the notation. Come on, Ben. Knight h5. Uh, Knight h5. Good job, Ben. Now, let's roll it back for a second because if we played Knight h5 earlier, he takes us, messes up our pawns. We play Bishop g4 to provoke f3. Now we have the ability to play Knight h5 because he's stopped his eye there. So B3. 
If F4, that's miserable. Dude, if you ever play F4 here with white, you're asking for it. Pawn takes. One, you got rid of that pawn so I could play rook e8 and focus on this guy. And two, you made my bishop good again, like America. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> ah, somebody's got the hat at home. All right, so. <laughs> so knight h5, getting stuff rolling. Rook f1. Now here is that clutch move. This is the move that I was immediately impressed with this game, and it's one of my classical games in the King's Indian that I select as like, this move is a, like, if I could put three exclams, I give it. Bishop f6. Now I'm going to put it on training mode so the class can't cheat. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, welcome to pain. All right, so first question to ask, and this is for the King's Indian player. Yeah, and she's not in here, so suck it up, princess. It's time to answer some questions. All right, so if bishop takes h6, g5, uh, g5, come on. G g5, let's go, let's go ahead and, and, like, do nothing of value. Well, all right, take your time here because, like, I'm not I'm not expecting an answer immediately. Well, we just played You're still running your mouth, though, not thinking. Rook e8. What was the point of probably playing bishop f6? There's probably a follow-up that's logical. Bishop g6. Bishop g5 is a logical follow-up. Why in the world would I play bishop f6 to give away my h-pawn just to play bishop g7? Yes! Here's the pawn. I wanted that file open. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. Like, that is some in intimidation psychologically, I guess. I didn't even need him. I didn't even need him. No! Bishop g5. Why? Yeah. Why, says the King's Indian player. All right, let's see it. He takes the rook. No? Oh, my bad. <laughs> he takes the rook. All right. Notice what the note says. White gets mated. That's right. Remember this. Enjoy it. Bishop e3 check. And then what? Queen h4? So you play queen takes f8. And after knight f1. And all he can do is keep giving stuff away. Is that not like... I mean, there are certain moves in chess that have inherent beauty to them. Sacrificing a pawn and making a counterintuitive move, which makes no sense... So your opponent can walk into a line like that? Come on. I know. That's why I'm showing you this game and showing you the idea, and you're throwing your shoes around. No, you were like, why don't you know that? Yeah, go ahead. F1? Yeah, that was another line that I had in. So let's go ahead and see after check yourself. Say he goes to F1, queen h4. And then say knight d1, knight g3, money. And what is he, what is he, what is he going to do? Right? He's got to take. And isn't that welcome to Pain Town? I mean, game, set, match, blouses. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go ahead and end that one there. We hit some major ideas for white and black in the King's Indian, and we got to see a very nice idea that didn't actually happen in the game, but I don't want to completely rip off somebody else's analysis. I, I had a little pepper of my own analysis in there, but you know, whatever. Question? Um, what if when the bishop had taken knight h6 and you take bishop e5, what if bishop took? Like, still that was the actual game. <laughs> and basically what happens if we if we roll that back and he took all, your bishop instead, you're just taking back with the queen. Your queen's in a good position. You're playing f5, and your attack is accelerated because your bad bishop got traded. For a pawn that wasn't really doing anything. So, a lot like we looked at in our previous video when we had the Albin counter gambit. You give a pawn for massive play. If you got to give a pawn, I'd love to give a pawn that doesn't really matter much in the position. Like so, a rook pawn. And it'll help with attacking. So, that, that that's the main idea. The King's Indian is an aggressive opening. But you must understand the positional ideas behind it. Hopefully, in the video, we were able to hit some of the ideas for the people who get massive time trouble every single game he ever plays. Man! Man. All right.
right, we're gonna end it there.